and welcome back to Adobe Live with me, Pixie Pew, your host in Animation 201. That's right, you graduated from Animation 101 and here you are in Animation 201, the place to be to learn all about beginning your animation journey from After Effects all the way to Adobe Animate in that frame by frame awesomeness. Oh yes. And as always, there's something new for you in store today. So that does mean that we've got some new mini games, although there'll be a call to action later. But if you want to jump ahead of the curve, don't forget to check out the Discord or the chat for the link for today's mini game. But before we get started, let me just check the chat myself and catch up with who's here today. Hello, Penny. Hello, Val. Welcome on in, Proxy. Getting called out. Oh, my. Hello. There's action in the chat. <laughs> Louis, welcome in. Lovely. Welcome on in. I hope you're ready for some animation wonderfulness. Oh, OK. I love it. It's always lovely when you look into the chat and you feel like you need a straw to be like, oh, some drama happening. Hello. Hello, Easy and Penny. Both of my my favorite animators popping on in. Welcome on in, Oliver. OK, enough dawdling. Should we talk about what we're doing today? Now, we've done a lot of different things through the last three. This is our third season, actually. Through our three seasons of animation, we've done a lot of different things from covering the 12 principles of animation to timing and spacing to squash and stretch and so on and so forth. But I thought we'd take a little break from the 12 principles and do something fun that's still related to you learning how to do something new in frame by frame animation. So it's going to revolve morphing and switching. But as always, something new means we have a new what. So what number one, what is switching? Switching is a method of transforming one image into a different image in a simple way. So let's say we have a Pokeball and we want to change it into a Pokedex. We want to find the easiest way of doing this, which would mean we don't have to do the transformations at all. Well, we do that by a couple of steps. First, we'd have the key pose. Then we'd have the anticipation, which is normally either bending down or going up. We'd have an overshoot in the opposite direction. And then we'd settle. Now, overshoot and settle are the different images. Our key pose, anticipation, overshoot, and the settle. This means we're able to easily make it look like it's changed into something different without having to do too much. Fantastic. But that's not all we're doing today. We need to talk about morphing too. Morphing is an effect that exaggerates the transformation from one image to another. Compared to switching, where we hide it via movement, morphing, we show it off via key poses, extremes, breakdowns, and in-betweens. So uh, let's break that down a little bit further, shall we? First, we would have our key pose, what it looks like, what it's going to end up looking like. Then we'd have our extremes, having it anticipate or having it overshoot. We'd have a breakdown explaining how the anticipation gets to the overshoot. And then we put in some in-betweens to explain how they got to the other ones. Once we put this all together, it starts to look a little bit like this. Now we can have a lot of fun with morphing. Each of them depends on what you kind of need from it. So there's a lot of fun to be had here. But that does mean we've got a couple of class projects. Huzzah! This time we've got two. We've got Pokemon and Tastes Like. In the last one, that case was it tastes like cherries. A reverb Mike said anticipation is making you rate Mike. I <laughs> Mike. <laughs> so this is your call to action to grab the lesson files. So check the description for today's lesson files or the chat. Thank you very much, Val, for popping this in. Val said, I'm so pumped. Oh, Val, you're too kind. And I clicked the button. <laughs> She's lost the chat. She's found the chat. All is good in the hood. I want to be the very best. Let me not sing too much just in case it clocks me. <laughs> and as you may have noticed in the bottom left, we do have my key students, Penny Doodles and Easy for Presidents animations from our last 
class. Now, if you didn't see the last class, check the description box. That'll be the very last video linked. But we can see Penny Doodles' little acorn having the time of its life. And Easy's little froggy hopping for goodness. But I was going to catch them all. Catch them all. Welcome on in, Uma. I love that Val's really going all in. Okay, Val's living their best life. Val's actually putting the whole lyrics in the chat, by the way. So if you wanted to sing along, maybe I should have it at the bottom. That way we won't get a slap on the wrist because there's no music to it, but the lyrics are there. Mm. Okie dokie. So hopefully you've had enough time to grab your stuff because we're moving on to exercise number one. Pokemon. So we're going to take a Pokeball and change it into something else. Can be anything. My example, I gave you something that looks like a Pokedex. In my mind, it did. <laughs> but you can change it to anything else. Or you could totally have one shape change into another shape. Doesn't have to be a Pokeball. But it's down to you. Pixie, do you create a safe space for me to be a fully fledged nerd? Absolutely. If only you knew, Val. If only you knew the way that I've got my room is fully kitted out. I know you can only see the smallest amount. I wait, wait, can we can can we I feel like we need to sort of do it, you know? Okay, I'm gonna do it. Val, this is how safe the space is. Hold on. It's gonna be in the small screen because we don't need to big it up. But Val, this is for you. This is how safe it is. Do you see do you see do you see this, Val? This Pokemon is talking to you live, just trying to give you the height and the vibes. Be fully nerded out. It's honestly the best. It makes your muscles work. It's heavy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mm, I don't hear any sound. Do we still hear sound? There we go. There's the sound. Thank you. Hey, I have a feeling both our rooms are fully nerded out. You were so right. Now, if you've opened your file, you'll notice that you might have started on this one first. So head on up to the top left where there's a little drop down box and go to example. There you can scrub between to see what I've done or you can press enter to let it play on its own. But just to re cover over what we talked about before, we have the key pose, pose one, pose two. After that, we have the anticipation. In my case, I wanted it to jump up. So before it jumps, it must go down. So I've got my anticipation and I have my overshoot of it going up. And then I had a little bit of a settle before it relaxed. Hi, Stony. Welcome on in. Nerdism is beaming into my cranium. <laughs> okay, first of all, these words are fantastic. Also needs to go on a t-shirt. Now, if you want to use the Pokeball I've drawn or you want to use an item of your own, you totally can. But if you want to use the Pokeball, which I'm totally going to do, I'm just going to, one, unlock the layer. Use the selection tool, or you can press Q doesn't really matter which one you go for and we're going to copy it control and C now you could totally make a new layer but I forgot that we could just hide this so if you want to use a blank one we could go over to switching that's in the top left and I wrote apple because I was thinking what could I change it to this would allow me to think on the fly you know oh Stony and Val oh and I'm gonna pop it on this layer if you don't have a new layer all you have to do is go over to this button here, click new layer, ta-da! Well, today's your day off. Oh, Stony, yes. Thank you for spending your time with us over here on your day off. And when I pasted it, I held Control, Shift, and V. That way it pasted in the exact location that I grabbed it from. It's always wonderful to see you lot. I hope you're having a lovely, what day is this? I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. I don't know why, Monday, I always forget the day. So we need the first key, which is this one. 
and I want my second key. Don't worry about the length of this for now, we can alter it as we go. But I want to draw a new thing and apparently it's going to be an apple, so we're going to hit F7. If you don't have the keyframe set up already, don't forget you can click on these three lines over here, go up to customize timeline tools and add on your insert keyframe, your insert blank, your insert frame and your auto because you might like it. I miss all of you. Oh, Stony. Oh, you're in a Star Wars art grind? Wow. Okay, Val, let's go. So I'm going to hit F7. That's going to completely make the other half blank. So if I toggle between the two, to toggle it's the less than and more sign key on your keyboard. I want to, to turn into an apple, apparently. It should be a completely different shape, though. I don't know. We could do a square? I picked an apple, but now I'm not even sticking with it. What can I do? A heart? Let's make it do a heart. That'll be fine. I'm going to turn on my over... Nope, my onion skin. So I'm going to something else completely. I've got my onion skin on and I'm going to draw a heart. There we go. That doesn't look like much like a heart. Should we try again? Okay. <laughs> if that's what's coming out, we're just going to accept it. I'm going to slightly adjust this. I sort of wanted it more symmetrical, but you know, the hand does what the hand does. I normally make it to Wednesday before I can't remember. Oh no, Oliver. Okay, I feel much better now. I'm not alone. Your days off change so frequently that you barely keep up. Okay, I feel so much better. We're all in the same boat. This is boom. I never know where I am. There's no time in the chat, but that's the right answer. That is the right answer. Okay, so we've got key one and key two. We can color it in later. When I colored in the other ones, it was after I had already animated everything. So we've got key one, key two. Perfect. We're going to do this to four, I think, for now. So to make it fours, let's insert some blanks. There we go. So this is going to hold for four before it changes to this one. And the first thing we need to do is the anticipation. I'm going to extend it one more. Press F6 because I still want this image. I'm not really morphing anything yet. Wait, wait, Reverb. What are you rhyming to right now? What are you rhyming to right now? I've made my new one by hitting F6. That's made a duplicate. And we've got our little white circle in the middle. That is our anchor tool. I want it to jump upwards. Now we can do it from either side, but we'll do it upwards for now. And if you've got time, we'll do it going from left to right, just so you have an idea of how to do it. I'm going to move the anchor to the bottom. And since it needs to jump, it has to go down before it can go up. So I'm going to hold shift, squish it down a little bit. And when things go down, they get wider too. So let's make this a little bit wider. We can make it fully squished, but we'll probably add a little bit more on in a second or two. So now, if we scrub through it, we've got key pose one, anticipation, but then we just got the other frame. We don't have the overshoot yet, so I need it to be up. So let me hit F6. And I'm just going to press F5, get a little bit of room, a little bit of space. If you want to pull this in a little bit, hold Shift and F5 to squeeze it all in. So now I'm going to claim that when it's jumped, it's already going to be this new shape. So for it to have jumped, it needs to be in the air. So let me click this up here. And this is on a two. You can pull this to a two, why not? We'll see what happens. And we'll just flick through for now. Let me turn off my onion skin. Sometimes you might find having your onion skin on could be a little bit detrimental for you just seeing how it moves naturally. So I'm clicking over. Cool. So now we've got a little bit of movement and a little bit of action. Love to see it. We can take this a step further. We've technically done everything we need to. But if we want it to act a little bit smoother, we can totally do that by going in and adding some in-betweens. So the in-between will give us an ease in in this situation. So now I've gone to my anticipation. I need an in-between between keyframe one and anticipation. So from here, I'm gonna make a new keyframe. 
give it a bit of room. I'm going to make it a two again to spread this out a little bit. Bear in mind that you don't have to just stick to twos and ones for the length of your frames. You can mix and match it up a little bit because maybe you need it to hold for a little bit more to add some more oomph to the animation or to actually add some anticipation before something happens. Okay, I'm going to put the onion skin back on. And I know it's sort of here. This is where having the colors not on already might be pretty helpful for you. And also maybe pulling out your onion skin a little bit further because you couldn't see it because my onion skin wasn't dragged out enough. So now we can see it's sort of halfway between this one. And let's do that one more time. Let's hit F6. I'm gonna pull this in. I only need to see where it's going. Control and plus to go further in. I'm gonna move the anchor down. Hold shift. Remember the in-between is halfway between the frame you're at and the frame you're going to. Now, if we scrub through these. Ooh, let's click elsewhere. There we go. We've got a little bit, ooh, a little bit of action. And let's say we want to add a little bit more awe before the thing happens. We can drag out the very last frame. So now you're kind of prepared for it to do a, ooh, bah. Welcome on in, Sam. Lovely to see you. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more by hitting F6 once more. Let's drag it down yet again. So Sam, today we're working on morphing and switching. Although I think something you'll find very fun is uh, I think we're going to work on doing 360 animation turns after all of this. It'll be a lot of fun. So I've got it held down. Pop this out here. So that just means just before it goes up, it goes down just a little bit more. Just a little bit of a squish. And then we have it come up. Now we need to work on the in-betweens between our anticipation and our overshoot. So let's hit our onion skin once more. And let's say this is it going up cool. I need the movement in between to sort of look like the last shape. So this doesn't mean that we actually have to draw anything new. We're just going to morph it a little bit. So let's hit F6. Let's grab this frame we've got here. Let's stick it on a two for now. And I'm gonna move it a little bit down. I'm gonna move the anchor to the top. I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna squish it a little bit. So that way, when it comes up, it kind of helps the eye believe that, oh, this changed from this. The eye's really going to do most of the work for us. There we go. Very nice. Oh, Sam said morphing and switching is actually the very first kind of animation you ever did. Well, no wonder you're here right now. This is for you, Sam. I can't wait to see what you do. OK, so I've got this to this. But I feel like we could do a little bit more with this. Let's say we have an in-between between this one and that one. Oops, there we go. Hit our F5. Put our onion skin back on. And we can sort of get it sort of close to both of them, but not quite. It's a bit like when we did the smears. It's halfway in between both. There we go. Now we're kind of getting a bit of a slowed movement. That's because we're on twos. But thankfully, since we're able to adjust how we want the timing to go, we can do that later. So I've got it coming up, squeezes. We've got it going, oh, and then it comes down. Now I'm going to stick on loop. If you need it to loop, you can put loop playback on if it's not already. Or if you want to loop a specific area, check out the bottom right turn on loop and you can drag its movement. I love how I'm reusing the shape. This is one of definitely the simplest ways um, to do a switching animation for the most part, because thankfully we're on a computer. 
we can take full advantage of the tools that we've got. So, oh my goodness, yes. We're gonna do some more kind of redrawing in the next one. Okay, so we've got this. We didn't really show it going down, but it's hit the floor, but we need a little bit of a overshoot of it touching the floor before it comes back. So let's grab the last image, hit the F6, make a space for two. Gonna move the anchor to the bottom and I'm just gonna squish it out to make it be like it's Oh, welcome, ma'am. It's good to see you again. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday and I hope you're ready to learn some animation. Yes. So we've got this. I could have it go further than it's supposed to. So now if we take a look at this back, make sure your background layer is the same length. Otherwise, you're going to have a flash of a different color. Oh, oh, yes, Anna. Oh, cool. And if you want, since I've always been a fan of the bloop, 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 after this, we can do one more before it settles. Thank you very much, Val. If you do want to work on the mini game files that we're working on today, check out the chat. Val's popped them in. You can also check out the description box too. And if you want your work to show up on Animation 201, DM me, <laughs> wherever you can find me. Oh, thank you, Sam. Well, you know what? Maybe in the future, maybe in the future, that'd be really, really cool. So I really love the jiggle for everything. Things that don't even need it, I just added anyway. So it's gone down. We've already got our settle picture, but I want it to go up and then settle. So I'm gonna pull two frames back. I'm gonna hit F6. I'm gonna put two frames out. Is that two? That was more than two to me, but okay. And we're gonna make it go in the opposite direction from where it's going to end up. We don't really need to see where it came from. So I'm gonna say it goes here, squeeze it out a little bit, make this be on twos. And now, when we go to watch it, we're gonna have a blah, blah, blah. A little blah, bloop. Do have a little boop. So if you've got this, and you're cool with it, but you need it to be a little bit faster in places. Don't forget, go back through, see where you don't need maybe any extra frames. Maybe you only need it to be on ones because it's a fast movement and where it needs to be a semi slowish movement, turn it to twos. So I've changed some of the faster bits and I've made them be on ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I found a really quick way since Adobe Animate sometimes highlights things is if you turn on your multiple frames, select everything, click and drag everything, then select off of it, it will fix it. There we go. Wow. Wow. I kind of think it should probably be a bit wider and then it would be okay. Okay. Kind of. It's cute. It will do. If you wanted to fill this in now, now that you've finished, all you have to do is go to the left, pick a color, Press K or find your paint bucket and then you can fill it in. If you haven't completely sealed your item, however, and it won't let you fill it in, press the B button, go over to your paint or your brush mode and select paint behind. That way it's not going to go over your outline and then you can press the, hold on, I didn't select it all the way. Whoop, there we go. Then you can press your paint bucket tool and it will help fill in gaps even if you haven't actually completed them in the out, uh, in the uh, outlining stage or the line art stage. Huzzah! I just went and saved all the episodes of the series to watch later. Oh, thank you, Stony. Oh, Sam forgot to share the progress of his redesign in the Discord. Oh yes, please, I'd love to see you. Okay, so we've done one. Let's say you wanted to do this in the other way though. You wanted to make it go from left to right. You can do that with easing. So we've got this, same again, key one, key two. We'll hit F6 and I'm just gonna move it, nudge it to the right a little bit with my keypad. We're gonna do F6 again. 
nudge it a little bit further. Let's put our onion skin on, see where we came from, where we're going. Let's say that this is all the way over here. So it actually has a place to go. So now we've got a little bit of movement, movement. Let's give it a bit of a bigger movement. I'll put this all on ones for now, but we'll see how it goes. A little bit further apart. Remember, if the images are close together, they move slower. The further apart they are, the faster they move. And the next one would be the heart. So we could take a look and see what this looks like for now. All we need to help this is the heart to meet it halfway. So let's duplicate our heart. And we're going to move our heart over. <laughs> Back to the shadows. Ooh, very nice, Sam. Thank you so much for popping in. It's always wonderful to see you. We're going to pop our heart over here. Could give it a two. I think maybe a one's good. Let's fill it in the same way we did with the other one. F6. Wait, F5, F6. Move it over a little bit more. Take a little look. Cool, not bad. We can help it out a little bit though by maybe stretching its shape a little bit. So I'm just gonna drag it out. This is a little bit like what we did before by making its shape be sort of similar to the thing that it's coming from. Hold control in the corners to grab it. Cool. Now this one's kind of different from this one. So we could totally do a smudge if we wanted to, or we could just move it closer together. I might see if we can just stretch it out. Ooh, we got a little bit of a smear going on there. And if we want, we can have that settle situation happening again. So we hit F6, say that this goes just out. Oh, let me just rotate that. We're gonna move the anchor to the bottom. Just gonna tip it a little bit and then the settle is our first original pose for it so now it's done a little wah! not bad so we can use the switching in lots of different ways it's just about changing the image between movement and the brain will do the rest for you wonderful so now with our remaining time it's time to do number two tastes like cherries so in this one we're actually going to show what the morphing looks like this time so for this you can pick anything i picked lipstick and cherries in my example if you are using my mini game homework and you don't know how to switch back to this one head up to the top left go down to morphing and you're right there You'll notice you don't have the reminder and the note. I was thinking of, oh, if I forget what I can make on stream, let me write it on there. <laughs> so it's really useful if you're working. You can totally use the layers and the outside area to leave notes and keys and ideas for you. Okay, so you've got an example folder in the background folder. If you click the example folder, I'm going to hide the eye for the top one. I'm going to turn on the eye for the rough one. You'll see my rough had the initial key one and then key two, which is pretty much where we should start from. Bit like how we did the bunny, we did everything in a rough first, then went back over with the color and everything that we actually wanted. So definitely a good way to go because it will save you from having to go back. The rough will let you know if the animation and the timing works, which is really, 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 really good. Leave color swatches on the side too. Absolutely, Penny. Use that as your baseline. Yes, you absolutely do have swatches and you can make your own and all of that jazz, which is great. But once you have your images or your colors, just leave them on the side so you can color pick them. Much faster than you trying to go into the swatch folder and trying to grab it. You've got to go in there. Whereas you can just use the eyedropper shortcut, click it on the side, go back to work. Very, very nice. So if we hide my key one and my key two, we take a look at the top one, I've actually labeled these ones. If you do wanna label your work, select your layer, go to frame and underneath label, you can name it right there. So 
this is key one. This is our key two. We know we need key one, key two. We need our extremes. Our extremes are our anticipation. So my key one, I got my anticipation because I wanted it to jump up. And my other extreme is my overshoot. I knew the cherry would fall down, so it's going to squash. And then we had the breakdown, which was to explain how one, how the anticipation got to the overshoot and all of that jazz. I ended up having to have a couple of breakdowns to make its movement make sense, as well as adding in our in-betweens, which is literally in between the previous frames to make sense of all the actions. If you do want to scrub through it, you can so you can see how I got to the ultimate result that I ended up with. But we're going to do sort of a simpler one because I had three parts meant I had to do three different things. So let's be aware of the time and do something a little bit simpler. To make a new layer, don't forget, Go over to the left hand side and click new layer. I've got a layer here already and I'm going to do a, what is that now? A carton, carton to apple. It's not really going to look like an apple. I don't think <laughs> by the very end of this, I'm not too sure. When you want to hide my example, just click the eyeball. There we go. And now we've got where we're working on. If you do have a lot of things on the screen or you want to split your layers because you've got lots of different things going on, you totally can. To help you focus on what you're actually working on, click the little circle on your layer. You can change the color as well if you need to do all that kind of stuff. It's kind of useful when something's actually a specific color. That way you can automatically tell what it is without you having to read, which is a slightly a fast way to do things. Okay, so let's go back to the basics that we know. I'm going to highlight all of these, get rid of this. I want to do my first key pose. I'm going to say I could have made that perfect by holding shift. Maybe we don't need perfection because it's going to mean I'm going to have to try to keep it up. Okay, let's say that this carton is apple juice and we're just going to, we're just going to, but it looks like, no, no sticky keys. We, it looks more like milk right now, but... There's nothing I can do about that. Just pretend like it's apple juice. Okay, so we've got our apple juice cut and I'm not going to write on it because it just means it's more that we've got to animate. I think the more things you animate, you realize you really don't want to do all of that too much. It's going to take more time than we have right now. So our key image is the apple juice cotton and we need another one. So let's hit F7. There we are. I've got my onion skill on at the moment. So that is why we're seeing the previous one. I'm using it just so I can sort of be like, oh, I want my apple to be in the same place that this carton is. So we're going to draw an apple. Looks more like a cherry. I'm going to leave it like that. Cherry apple. Hazard. Okay. So we turn off our onion skin, flip between the two. This is going to change into this. We've got our key. Oh, I went down too far. If you like, you can totally label it as well. Well, we don't really need to do it on the screen, do we? We could do it on the thingy. Okay, we've got our key one. We've got our key pose two. And let's put it on two, shall we? I've moved it to threes because I know the next one is going to need that third frame that I've made. So we've done our key pose. We just need to do our anticipation now. So I'm still going to reuse the images. We don't really so fresh. It turns into a carton. <laughs> I mean, you know what? You're making it sound like we should do the apple to the carton. That kind of makes sense. Penny, <laughs> now I want to swap it around. I kind of want to swap it around now, Penny. OK, I'm going to do it this way, but, you know, showing the fruit to the food that it becomes is actually really cool. No, my Google thinks I'm talking to it. Whoops. Okie dokie. So I'm going to hit. Wait, what do you mean? Yes. Oh, no, Stony. Fine. OK, we'll switch it. I switched it. Apple to the carton. Here we go. So now this is key one. This is key one. This is key two. 
and it looks like for it to go there it's gonna have to grow is this in the right position let's just check my apples move so let me put my apple more into the center it's gonna grow it's ultimately gonna have to grow out i don't think i need this anymore actually we could keep the notes the notes are always nice let's see what our notes are ah yes good reminder keyframe anticipation breakdown overshoot key pose always handy but we need this to grow out so i'm just going to make a new layer just so i can point out what i need to point out for here so if this ultimately is going to grow out and it's going to go up that means that I need it to, to do an anticipation. It has to do the opposite of those movements. So the opposite of going out and up would be going down and in. So it's going to kind of, it's going to grow into a carton. So carton growth. Let's hit F6 again, pop this out. So I want you to go up. That means anticipation is you going down. We don't necessarily have to move it from its position too much. I might. You can have the onion skin on if you like as well, or if you just want to flip between, it makes sense. Instead of growing, mate it multiple. Wait, PJ? PJ, what do you mean? Wait, make it multiply? <gasps> okay. Oh my gosh. So what, like apple, apple, apple? Cotton. Wait, wait, wait. Yo. Okay. 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 So let's say if we're going to multiply the apples to be the same height. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is cool. This is cool. It still needs to anticipate down, but the breakdown is going to show that. So let me pull it down. Let's stretch it out. Oh no. It's going down and coming in. I might make it squash out just because it has to go up. Wait, hold on. We might tweak it in a little bit. I love the excitement. <laughs> okay, we might stick with this for now. I should really pull it in, but I'm not feeling like it right now because we have to make it butterfly. Ah, okay, so it's gonna go. We've got our anticipation. We need this to overshoot. Let's push this out a little bit. F6. Okay, if it's overshooting, if it's growing into this, let's have it be like, whoa, hey. So let me pull it up, pull it out. Give it two, that's not two. <laughs> Give it two, there we go. And let's scrub, woo, hey. Take another look again, woo. <sighs> I said, do you need some apple juice? There we go. Cool. So now the apple's gonna bloop, bloop, bloop. Three apples make a carton. So it's anticipating. And we're gonna do the breakdown to make sense of what we're gonna have to do next. We need something to explain how this and this get to each other. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Do F7. I want it to be blank because I want to take this. This is what the apple looks like. Go over here and click Control Shift V. I'm going to turn on my onion skin and I don't need to see where it comes from. I need it to layer on top. So I'm going to duplicate this. Control Shift V. Okay, so one's here. They're kind of big, but it is what it is. We've got one here. This one doesn't need its stem anymore because you're not going to see it if another one's on top of it. This one's kind of too low. Pop this one in, Control Shift V. And we're just going to erase the bits. Hold on. Can it, can it identify it? No, it can't. 
This is where doing stuff on separate layers would be really helpful. So if you were going to do it on one layer, maybe you could make that your rough because then you don't need to do all this rubbing out really preciously kind of stuff. Okay, so we've got three apples. This is the breakdown. Make it two. I'm just going to put a loop between here and here. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it's kind of cool already. Okay. And we ain't even done anything. Hey, oh, okay. So save your work because you know how it be. Save your work. The anticipation now, we need to explain how this gets to here. So I want it to go blop, blop. So we want to work on getting this to this. So if that's the breakdown between the, which I didn't name, anticipation, and this is our breakdown one. It is exciting, right? Oh my God! I would never have thought about that. I would never have thought about it. Okay, so it's squashed. Make a third line, F6. So that's that. Let's make sure our onion skin is in a good spot. I'm just gonna move it here. I'm not gonna do any fancy, I might later on, but this is where putting your stuff on a separate layer would come handy because if I wanted to change the timing, the timing of the apple that gets chucked up by the other one would be slightly different to the one that's coming up underneath it. So it's kind of easier on separate layers. So do bear that in mind when you're doing your own one. So I've got this one here. I'm going to copy this. That's sort of where it needs to be. And I'm going to do control shift V. Let's think about the in-between here. So let's take a look at this. I have an idea. Sa uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Oh my goodness, we've got lots of steps. So we've got this step. Let's call this another breakdown. I need to explain how this gets to this now. If you take it like that, it will make, make your work a little bit simpler. How did this get to this one? Easy. Let's make this another frame, make it another two. Oh, actually, let's grab this one instead. I'm gonna copy all of this, make another frame. Get rid of that, so I don't need it. There we go. And I'm gonna say, before this one got to where it is. Oh, you know what? You know what I should have done? I know exactly what I should have done. <laughs> okay. What we needed to do was take this one. Oh, I can do it on this one. It's not, it's, we're not being too precious. Move it down. I don't want the top one to be too squashed because technically, well, kind of, it is moving up at a kind of force. If you do want to select a specific thing, you can totally press the L button and highlight specific stuff. Or you could just draw it again. I'm going to go to Q. I want it to move out a little bit to be like, oh, it's being affected by the force. So we've got this, it goes down. Let's say we could probably make it go down again, but we'll do that afterwards. We've got, wow, this here, totally make it wider, I feel. Wider and further down. Maybe we should probably connect this gap. No, it's not gonna be on the screen for very long, but it's up to you. And now it's here we could totally make it react to its settling. So if it's being pushed up, it means it's going to continue to go up before it comes back down. Push it up. Did we save? Hold on. Let's make sure we actually saved where we came from. Try not to edit stuff before you've made a duplicate of your frame. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and do it again. All right. Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. 
The fools, you say. Oh. That Star Wolf is coming back. Love the sound. What's the ID track? That is an Adobe stock sound called art from Igor Pamphonia. Amazing chill edit dub. So head on over to Adobe stock. And if you look up amazing chill edit dub, you should find it. All right, so we got it coming up. I need it to settle back to this one, which it does. It kind of comes up in, I don't need all of that. It kind of comes up in the same, no, no, that's not what I said, is it? Oh, okay, it's doing what it wants. Let me manually select, there we go. It is going up, but I think I'm gonna make it come out as well. And let's take a little looky at what we've got. Oh, let me make this one a little bit longer. We've got what? Ooh. Maybe it should jump off it. I didn't want it to jump off it, but now, <laughs> now I think I have to make it jump off it. Oh no. I agree, loving the vibe. Oh, I'm so glad. Actually, we don't need like this bit that's in here. We really don't need this. Oh, you have it? Oh, wonderful. It's always nice to pass on that Adobe stock love. I really don't want it to, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to. It's just gonna <laughs> make it be more work. And we don't have that kind of time. She says, I'm, I'm not doing it, I promise you. I'm just making it look a little bit different. Down, up. Down. Up. Oh no. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Accidentally pushed a button and it opened up the page. Pixie, should you have left it alone? Maybe. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have. Oh, you know what? That's why. When it goes up, it's supposed to squish. My bad. <laughs> okay. Up, squish, down. And then it's going to repeat that going down action. F6. Let's spread this out a little bit. Now they're both going to go down. I'm not going to make this wait a second. Did we make a duplicate of this already? I don't think we did. F5, F6. There we go. So now it's okay if we edit this one, it's going to be stored for us. Check it. Up, back. This one is going to go down. When it goes down, it gets wider. gonna do f6 again because i really do like this as my uh intermission pose and then we need another apple underneath we do need to see where it's supposed to end up it's supposed to end up all the way up there somehow so we can have it go over the pose grab the original apple we did because that one's where it should be Control shift and V. Down luck. Nice. And then the settle should be this again. And then it can turn into the other one. If we tidied it up, which if we have time, we will. Uh, Kind of give it a bit of a different vibe let's hit f5 that's not f5 and check it out Ooh, got a little bloop, bloop. okay super cute super cute i have time i'm going to tidy up this little bit here again where the rough comes in that way you would automatically 
not have to worry about trying to make sure it fits in the right place or because it's on a separate layer you'll be able to erase it without having to worry about destroying the other one just gonna see if i can cut off the main bits and then i can just select the remainder with q and have animate get rid of the rest for me thanks Val. there we go Looks like it should come back down briefly before it goes back up. Sometimes you do need to turn off the onion skin just to give you a better grasp. Boom, boom. And the main part of the morphing, we need to explain how to get from here to here. So gonna hit F5, F6. Let's take a little look at these two. And the main thing that needs to happen is this needs to get a little bit wider and smaller. So if you wanted, you can make it get really small, really high first, but I think I'm gonna suck it in. Hit F5, F6 again. We got this, we can do this. And I'm gonna actually go and edit some of this here we go you can see where it came from and i want to start to turn the shape into the one that it needs to become so if it's more of a squared shape make its halfway point more square you can start to erase some bits of your work as well And then we do it one more time. F6, F5. Between this and this, what kind of shape does it need to have? It needs to become a little bit more like this. Not fully on the shape, but close enough. She's checking the time she was. You can get rid of all of these. We want it sort of halfway in between, sort of halfway. Sort of turning into a square. If we have more time, we do something more with the sten. Fighting there. And I'm going to say it's going to have to be down to you now to go ahead and let's hold this pose. It's going to be down to you to go ahead and change the timing of it so it becomes a little bit more faster or it holds in more places but we did it Woo! apples bouncing up turning into a carton hello which means it's the conclusion Woo! goodness gracious conclusion so your homework is to complete the mini game homework you have two use switching or morphing on an animation of your own as well don't forget that it doesn't need to be complicated you do not need to make it multiply <laughs> maybe do something simple first because then you'll get the gist of it and then do more thank you stony uma val penny Woo -hoo -hoo. i hope you enjoyed animation 201 today stay tuned because we do have more things coming up for you next on adobe live Otherwise, I'm looking forward to seeing your work. We've got this. Thank you for joining. Bye.